Welcome back. Australians in Ukraine are being told to leave now as tensions with Russia escalate. It comes as NATO fighter jets are deployed to Eastern Europe and troops put on standby. With warnings, an invasion is imminent. And here to run us through the situation is international security expert, Professor John Blaxland from Canberra. John, thanks for your time. Get Thank out you. is the message to any Aussies in Ukraine. It's pretty serious. Yeah, look, it's hard for us to get our heads around because in this day and age you think, are you serious, Putin? Why would you do this? I mean, mm. NATO is a shadow of its former self. No one's seriously talking about ratcheting up things in Ukraine. He's already got pretty much a, 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 you know, concessions out of the West. NATO doesn't want to do anything more in Ukraine. Uh, no one's really going to challenge Putin and Russia over Ukraine anymore. Uh, so what does he want? Well, what he wants, it appears, is to consolidate his own position, uh, which is increasingly precarious, apparently. Reports are coming out that in Moscow, he's a lot of, a lot of grumblings amongst some of his erstwhile supporters who are starting to worry about him maybe losing the plot here, because this is a big step up and potentially catastrophic, not just for Ukraine but for way beyond Ukraine. There are reports coming out of the US this morning, out of DC, um, that the US is considering sending 5,000 troops to Eastern Europe, not into Ukraine, but Eastern mm. Europe. I mean, that's, that is a statement of intent, is it not? Uh, do, does anyone really want to go to war with Russia? No, that's exactly right. No one wants to go to war. Joe Biden especially, he's been so busy trying to pivot to Asia, focus more on China and, and Iran and Russia, keep pulling it back into the central Eurasian landmass, much to his chagrin, uh, and, uh, you know, occupying a lot of the policy bandwidth in Washington, taking up space that would be occupied elsewhere. But the 5,000 troops, they're not going to Ukraine. They're going to neighbouring NATO mm. states. Um, so this is a really important point. Putin is looking for an excuse to trigger what he wants to do, which is to overthrow the regime in mm. Ukraine and establish a state that is pliant and, and compliant with what he wants for a greater Russia, this Rus land, you know, this idea, this kind of really kind of xenophobic uh, Russian dominance arrangement whereby everyone else basically is subservient. Um, it's a bit like the old days. It's slightly Stalin-esque if you mm. think about it, mm. and it's pretty ugly. And could be disastrous. So it does escalate and there is an invasion. What role might Australia play in that? Well, hopefully, uh, you know, we'd be very circumspect about our options here. And we've already talked about some intelligence support and uh, particularly on the cyber security front. And I think that's where we have a bit of expertise where we can offer. Because one of the techniques that uh, we know the Russians are using as part of this campaign of what they call maskirovka, this masking of behaviour, this kind of deception operations. I love that word, maskirovka. It speaks to Putin's go-to space, you know, former KGB officer looking to deceive, to ferment unrest, to cause dissension, to try and hoodwink people, confuse Confuse people a bit like in 2014. You remember back in 2014, the little green men, everyone's saying, who are these people? What is going on? And the Russians are saying, oh, we don't know anything about that. Of course, it's all orchestrated by the Russians, but the deception operations back then were effective. Now, deception's not so convincing. Everybody's kind of onto what Putin's doing. So what's he going to do? It looks like he's prepared to up the, uh, ratchet up the ante again. Mm. And, and that, of course, if we go further down this path, if he's not prepared to back down, or if his backers in, in, in Moscow don't rein him in, uh, that's hard to see anything other than a conflict emerging. That's what we call a war. Well, we've seen uh, the ramifications already on the international mm. stock markets uh, this morning, so hold on to your hats. Good to talk to you. Oh, great explanation and insight. Appreciate it. Thanks. Just ahead, back to school.